Hello my dear students I hope all of you are doing well today we are going to look into a poetic form called jintishi as we have learned earlier poetic form is as important as poetic content like when you would take water in a bowl it takes the shape or the form of the bowl so poetry is also contained in a particular kind of form the form is extremely important especially for a classicist like t s eliot they would say that form is more important than the content in a marxist perspective also change or revolution happens in terms of the form and not always in terms of the content so experimental literature always plays around with the form and not the content so one of the greatest facets of our contemporary world is the rise of a great civilization which is china china so chinese civilization was one of the um, uh, most amazing civilizations in the history of mankind and due to the colonialization by european powers uh, china was suffering in the uh, early modern period but recently china has emerged as a great power so as a result we are also uh, learning uh, a chinese poetic form called jintishi not just because china is a huge power of course but because uh, chinese heritage is part of our global humanity it's part of our common humanity so we had to learn that so this is a particular poetic form called the jintishi the jintishi originated in around 5th century ad in china so it deals with historical and political topics so if you are to compare the jintishi to the classical sangam literature of tamil uh, civilization you would say that it pertains to the puram rather than the akam it's more related to romance and childbirth and love and those more tender things this is more related to politics and history so the 5th century is far away from our times but the jintishi we learn today is a modern manifestation of the earlier classical form it contains eight lines of four couplets okay four couplets they comprise eight lines and the even lines rhyme like the second fourth sixth and eighth lines would rhyme with each other so chinese is a famously or infamously a tonal language and the writing the script of chinese is ideogrammatic the great scholar who has studied chinese poetry is fenelosa so you should all read fenelosa we can discuss fenelosa in class if time permits so the point about chinese uh, language is that it's a tonal language okay so there is this uh, very famous very celebrated uh, cliche uh, poem in chinese uh, which uh, deals with uh, a poet it uh, speaks of a poet uh, it contains the tonal sound shi the lion eating poet in the stone den it comprises uh, the uh, tonal phoneme shi repeated again and again and again and again the lion eating the poet in the stone den so chinese is a tonal language what is a tone it's slightly different from accent in english english is an accented language chinese is a tonal language it uses tones so in tones uh, the volume of your sound doesn't matter the amplitude or magnitude of your sound doesn't matter uh but it's it's a rather a more a nuanced a finer variation in your sound that comprises tone accent on the other hand is similar to tone but it's more focused on the sound uh that you emit from your vocal cords okay so english is an accented language chinese is a tonal language so jintishi pertains to the tonal tradition of chinese poetry okay uh so we have learned about jintishi today we have learned that uh, tone is a uh, tonal chinese is a tonal language so jintishi is a poetic form and it comprises eight lines of four couplets the uh, even lines rhyme with each other okay so so much for jintishi jintishi and let's meet again with another poetic form that is rubai thank you so much for joining today goodbye